Okay. So, there we go. Have to admit that I um, played some this morning. So my bankroll, I'm already up two buy-ins from just this morning. So we're one-tenth the way there for the first uh, step of the ladder. Um, six five suited from hijack. I mean, I think close. necessary could definitely play it um, four or five is a little um, two down for three bet there and I'm only gonna play three better fold from there at this rake um, no sense getting involved with a speculative hand even if we are in position especially against population, which uh, tends to call three bets too much. So full deck is lower for a hand like that. Um, yeah, big, big bet from early position, ace 10 offsuit really not doing so well, especially out of position. Okay, yeah. it's a good spot. So uh, yeah, we'll go big here. Hope to pick it up pre-flop, but there you go. A small blind calls, which in, will induce these people to call. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is close, actually. How much more do I have to call uh, relative to the pot? Uh, really not that much. I have a gut shot, two overs, and a uh, backdoor flush draw. That's uh, really close. Um, I'm sure he just has a pair. Um, yeah, I'm going to call. There we go. That's why we do that. Close, though. Could have folded. Would have been okay. Gotta kind of look at the pot odds, really important. Don't need to win that often to make that call with that much um, equity. close one um, I want to fold I mean you can you can call this for sure especially against pool but um, playing those um, big offsuit um, hands from out of position against a low jack raise uh, again not necessary um, you can there's nothing wrong I think with making that call I'm sure the solver would make that call uh, although not 100% sure, I have to look. King Jack offsuit actually could be actually could be a fold and solve the Probably close, but uh, I think exploitively it's not a bad fold. Um, in fast poker, especially where. Um, Pool probably plays a tight range from low jack. Probably doesn't, well, I can't say for sure, but there's a chance that player might not even play anything weaker than king jack offsuit from there. So, might not even play king jack offsuit. Ah, this is a fold. Uh, you figure their three bet range is even tighter. They're probably three betting um, 
aces, kings, queens, jacks, um, ace king. Looks up the bulk of that range, and uh, ace four suited, not doing so great against that. You could also light four bet there. That's a genuine possibility. Um, and I, I'll do that sometimes. And um, yeah, it works sometimes. These um, medium ace x in the uh, big blind um, versus a hijack, I think. I think it's a fold. I think actually the solver would fold that. Just um, kind of the worst ace x. And Villain's certainly not playing that hand or anything weaker than that hand. I try my best, um, and I'm still learning, still trying to improve. I think this is not a bad squeeze here. Um, we're on the button. We're going to keep position unless we get a cold four bet. Um, well, isolation raise, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Two, two guys here. Oh, wow, that's a nice. That's a very nice hand. Um, should we raise here? I think we should. Um, I think, no, yeah, I think I'll just call. Um, but you definitely could raise there. Um, this might slow him down. It does not, and we will fold. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna chase a gut shot with one street. play jack seven against a five X raise from early position. Yeah, as I was saying, just trying thinking, just constantly trying to think about villains range, what they're doing and how my range first and foremost plays against villains range. Um, yeah, I think we go for a All right, we're in, um, forget where we are. That's too small. Um, I'm just not used to these small bet sizes. Um, yeah, I think we do a little bet here. See how everyone responds. Uh, not the best card for us. We're not gonna give up, but we're not gonna bet that card. One would call with a nine. Um, well, that's pretty, pretty. This is the worst card for us, probably a two. Oh, ace king, come on. I'm surprised, villain. Just called, but he's in position. That's not the worst play. I might do that occasionally. Ace king off in position. Yeah, that's not terrible. Again, we're just going to call. I think Villain has a pair. Um, probably afraid of the flush draw, but apparently not. Um, yeah, we're going nowhere here, so we'll get out. Um, those small donk bets are, I've noticed, is something that happens a lot at this stake. Um, and should be raised very frequently. In that particular situation, I just felt I was sort of in the middle of my range there. Can um, I isolate? Of course. Well, 
that's no good. But I mean, obviously, I had a, if I'd had a diamond, I'd call. Um, but it's a really bad play in GTO land by doing there, but. Um, The uh, you know only worse hands are going to fold there. Um, we'll call a small bet here. We could have um, we could have uh, bet the river there for Thin Valley for sure. Probably should have. It's hard. It's hard for me thinking and talking at the same time. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. This is a nice um, bluff situation here. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for another one here. <sighs> yeah, good bluff catch. I don't really understand a lot of what's going on. I think um, I think we can isolate here. Um, short stacked. Oh, I didn't notice that. Uh, yeah, that was probably it. Should have just folded there. Didn't notice it was short stacked. Um, this is definitely. Can we open from Lojack in the range? Hmm. Small-ish raise. Could mean he has a really, really strong hand or a really, really um, bad hand. Um, don't know. Yeah, using a like I said, a slightly larger size here. Um, yeah, this could be a check, nice check raise here. I want to check a lot out of position in these formations, single raise pots. And you're just called. And this is a flop he might have a lot of stuff on, um, but not stuff that beats us for the most part. So really nice opportunity to check raise. Um, we don't like that six of spades because he would call the spade draws. Um, you know, small bet we'll call for sure. And we'll do the same on the river. We'll bluff catch on the river to a small bet. Oh, that's kind of, ugh. He probably has two spades. Uh, he could also have a straight, he could have two pair. Uh, what are we, we're kind of unblocking all the bluffs though, so I'm going to go ahead and call. Oh, not fast enough. Uh, maybe I saved myself some money there. Yeah, I think 
um, <clears throat> that's probably an overbluffed spot. So uh, not a bad idea. I think, I think we bet small here. Um, oh, that's a good luck card, huh? Um, I think honestly our range would check here, but we're got such a strong hand. I think because our range would mostly check, we go for a big bet here. Yeah, too bad. It's probably very polarized on a wet board like that. Either we have a very good hand or a bluff. Everything else probably wants to check for the most part. Uh -huh. We got nothing here. Yeah, we just fold here. There's no reason to waste a big blind, even though it's very small. Kind of raised actually thinking about it. Might have been a good raising hand. Uh, not sure. Not sure we're blocking enough. Uh, probably blocking folds more than anything else. So probably not. Probably not a good raising hand. So maybe that was the best play. Uh, we could call here. I think I might. Actually, do a little set mining in position. Um, normally, that would be a fold. Ugh. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> sort of opening ourselves up to uh, squeeze. Yeah. Yeah, not a good play. Um, not the best flop for our range here. Two middle cards, jack high. Call small bet. See what happens on the turn. That does not help our range that much. Um, oh, I, you know, it's not the worst. I mean, if we were, you know, okay. Uh, I say we have no showdown value. Go for a bet here. And of course. Uh, we can play 8 9 from here. Don't want to do it all the time. But, you know, making a video. More fun to play than not play. borderline for our range, uh, but we do a lot of checking out of position anyway, so uh, really good, um, I think a really good raising hand here actually. We have backdoor straight, backdoor flush, it's not the worst flop for our range. He's got an ace. He has an ace. What do we do? What do we do? I think we just give up. He's got an ace. Probably. I don't think he'd call a raise with a five or a six or nothing. Yeah. So. I like to fall through generally. Pool folds incredibly much to uh, double barrels. Way over folds to double barrels. But um, in that configuration, I think um, I think that's a give up. It's a nice little hand in a little position. 
Um, we could call or raise here. Definitely not folding. Let's see what he does. Maybe he has, hopefully he has a, a diamond and thinks he's best. And yeah, and uh, uh, can we go all in here? Maybe not, but we can definitely do that. configuration you know if he had the king of diamonds he might call okay, that's an easy fold let's not make the same mistake twice me for eating. Let's see, let's see. Um, what's on my mind? What's on my mind about poker? Really trying to um, uh, if you if, if I think about it, uh, there's you know either we're facing a bet or we're facing a bet opportunity post swap, and when facing a bet, I'm really trying to organize my range in my head into. Uh, five categories. Um, I have a hand which is a value beater. That is, villain could be betting for value with the hand I beat. And um, that's a 100% call no matter what the circumstances. Um, uh, yeah. the bigger the bet size the smaller my range of value beaters because especially pool does not um, have enough bluffs with big sizes so really got to have a strong strong value beater something close to the nuts and over bets on the river um, And even then, sometimes, depending on the villain, the villain is someone who would never bet anything but the nuts. And, well, that one probably has the nuts. Um, and then my bluff catchers, I organize into three categories. Really good bluff catchers. And it depends on what, where, where, what street we're on. Um, on the turn, one has to account for um, equity realization. What can the hand improve? Is there is there a card on the river that could give us the best hand? That's a factor, which is not a factor, obviously, on the river. On the river, it's all about blockers. Every bluff catcher is the same, except for blockers doesn't matter the rank of the hand, how strong, quote unquote, it is. If it's a bluff catcher, it's a bluff catcher. It only beats bluffs. Otherwise, it's a value beater. Um, yeah, so the best bluff catchers are the ones that unblock the most bluffs and block the most 
value. Unblocking bluffs, blocking value. Um, and then, uh, you know, a middling hand is a hand that, like, maybe it doesn't block a lot of value, but it does unblock a lot of bluffs. Uh, or maybe it doesn't. It, unblocking bluffs is really the most important there. Um, if one has a hand that blocks a lot of value but doesn't unblock any bluffs, in other words, it blocks value and bluffs. Um, yeah, that's not that's not good, generally, on the river. Different on the turn, of course, um, because if you're blocking value and bluffs, you probably have some equity realization um, potential. Um, well, we like that, don't we? And I think we go for a small bet here. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not being um, exact with my sizing here because I'm just not um, fast enough uh, to and agile enough to talk and type in correct bet size. I'm being a little, a little inaccurate with my bet sizes here. That's okay. Um, and then the worst bluff catchers um, have very, don't block any value and have minimal unblocking potential. And yeah, and then there's a category of hands that um, don't even be bluffs, the, the natural bluffs, and you just want to fold those. So that, that's the way I try and think about it as far as bluff catching is concerned, as far as calling a bet. Um, yeah. And then uh, as far as betting is concerned, um, I try and do kind of a similar thing, um, and it, 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 you know, uh, except that it it starts with range um, more than hand. So there's a you know on the flop, um, you know, with exceptions, of course, um, there are hands that just want to check sometimes, but on the flop especially because villa the pool tends to overfold the flop um, if my range has a range advantage on the flop um, you know um, and of course it depends on the size of the range advantage um, uh, but we're gonna be betting a lot and not even worrying too much about the strength of our hand and if it's it's a really big range advantage, uh, generally, um, but not always, and that's important. We bet small with range, because there are times when we have um, a range advantage, but we want to bet big. Um, you know, we want to go for max value, and we're going to polarize, even though we have a range advantage. Um, our nut advantage is so strong. Um, this could go either way. Um, I wasn't really paying attention, so I'm just going to call because I don't know how long that player took to decide the bet. Um, Do we have showdown value here? Mm, maybe. That seems like a... This is going to be an interesting... Um, yeah, I don't know. 
No, I think we're gonna fold. No. That's an interesting one. I'm not sure villain, maybe we should have called there. I mean, I'm not sure. I think villain is bluffing a lot there actually. Uh, and maybe betting for thin value. Um, if we check three times, then I feel. Um, that a bet is better than a check behind. Hard to say there, hard to say. Um, and yeah. And uh, we're blocking a lot of the bluffs there, so good king queen. A lot of villains bluffing is gonna come from high over cards, so probably a good fold. Not the best bluff catcher, even though it's that's a perfect example. It's it's two high cards, um, but um, you'd think it'd be high up in our bluff catching range. But I think it's actually quite low. I don't think that's a good hand to have there. Like I said, I think we're blocking bluffs and unblocking values. So probably a good pitch. Flop for our range. Uh, are we going to worry about that too? Not too much, I think. I think actually, you know, villain doesn't or villain shouldn't have a lot of twos, so I think that's kind of bricky. So I think we can go for a big bet here. You know, over bet here. Oops, we were wrong. We were wrong. I guess no one does have some twos. Or maybe pocket threes or something like that. Normally when the board pairs you want to slow down. But I just just not sure there. Okay. Um, we can do both here. We can call and we can raise. Um, I'm going to call this time. Really good flop for us. I think this is a really good raise. We'll find out if villain has aces or kings. We'll know now. Or tens or a jack. Jacks. Yeah. Yep. Gosh, this, I think this has been going on too long. I'm having too much fun. All right, so we'll end this recording soon. I'll just get out of here. Apologize for the length. Got carried away. My thoughts. This is... Get out of here. Get back to playing a little bit better because so, I'm concentrating a little bit more. It's really important concentration. Um, and uh, yeah, gotta know. All right, we're done. That's cool.